Here in El Salvador, China is building the National Library. In Uruguay, Chinese smart filmmaker Xiaomi is opening up around the country. There are no Apple stores. Here at the Panama Canal, China operates some of these ports. In Argentina, this Chinese bank has more than 100 outlets throughout the country. And here in Brazil, the largest company for power generation and distribution is Chinese. China is racing for influence in Latin America, and it's going head to head with the U.S. Basically, the U.S. said that South America belongs to North America. Uh, now that has changed. You can see a lot of influence from China in Panama, Colombia, Venezuela, Brazil, Peru, Chile. Almost 60% of Americans think China's economic power is greater than its military strength. And here in Latin America, you see signs of that power. China is investing investing billions and increasing diplomatic ties, signing new countries to join its Belt and Road Initiative. All the public bosses are Chinese friends. Even governors and mayors from small areas of Latin America are flying to Shanghai, as China is pouring tens of billions of dollars into investments. Chinese investment package is significant for Argentina. The country likes to get Chinese money. Politicians, they are looking for money to create things like roads or uh, buildings. During COVID, China donated more than half a billion dollars in medical supplies and money donations. Chinese people, they just uh, gave this country a huge soccer stadium for free. Those are gifts. Come on, nothing is free. But it's not just through investments and diplomacy, but also through tech. Chinese companies are aggressively opening throughout the region with Uber-like apps and opening up smartphone stores that will remind you of Apple. They use Chinese smartphones. Didi Chu Sing, it's the first thing I saw when I left my hotel in Panama City. Guy at the store tells me they're planning to open 10 Xiaomi stores. A few years ago, I wouldn't think about having a Xiaomi phone, but it, it is something that is happening. This is my phone, uh, Xiaomi, less than $300. But make no mistake, China is not doing this in secret. It wants the world to know. China's global media networks are pushing out this narrative even bringing on American professors from Georgetown University who are bashing the U.S. political system. It's not going to be able to uh, match the resources that China has um, and huge infrastructure projects and the like. They just won't be able to, to compete. It's like China's CNN, except it's actually funded by its own government. And this is a channel you will find in your hotel room from Paris to Mexico. But is all of this investment a debt trap with ill intentions? Chinese government, they are good guys. No, they really want to help us. <laughs> or could this be a good thing? If we like China, we will be Chinese. <laughs> and what is the US doing about it? It is a strategic way of economically surrounding the enemy. And the enemy, of course, is the US. Everybody says here in Argentina, like people in the politics and economics, China is going to be our salvation. The battle for influence in Latin America. China was basically a poor, underdeveloped communist dictatorship. It decided it wanted to open up to the world. As China increases its uh, presence in Latin America. China grows. President Alberto Fernandez's state visit to China. Um, so we're seeing a huge infrastructure and investment on behalf of Beijing across South America. Uh, it needs resources that Latin America has. The United States seeks to win back its neighbors with billions of dollars in new investments. Really dissatisfied with the way that Washington dealt with the pandemic and trying to help out Latin. Washington has a lot of baggage that China doesn't. And it sees the United States as increasingly withdrawn, so China's become emboldened. Now, the United States obviously sees with some concern China's expanding uh, presence and influence in the region. If that's the most dominant nation on Earth, what do you think the world's going to look like in 20 or 30 years? I've been here for a few days and haven't seen any building remotely like the one that is planned. China is gifting El Salvador with a brand new stadium and this library that I find currently under construction. Once this building is completed, it will be astonishing for El Salvador. It's also very interesting that this sign behind me is mostly in Chinese. Spanish is an afterthought. This is part of a gift where China has committed to $150 million towards 13 projects here in El Salvador. And I've never been anywhere in all of the Americas where I saw so much Chinese prevalent on a construction project like this. If you look at the building that's planned for here, it says El Salvador, of course, on the entrance, but higher than El Salvador, you'll see China.
While this is a newer investment, over in Argentina, China has been expanding its reach far longer through people's wallets. This is it. This is the bank. And it's the tallest building in the area in a premium location. ICBC is a Chinese bank. About 10 years ago, it acquired Standard Chartered here, giving it a huge presence. The move would make it the first Chinese financial institution to enter Argentina. In Argentina, this Chinese bank has more than 100 outlets throughout the country. Today, it has more than 1 million customers here. And it's not just a bank that happens to be Chinese. ICBC was started and is owned by the Chinese government. It's crazy because I'm not looking for anything related to China right now. And I saw the ICBC tower, then I saw a big ad for ICBC, and then over there I saw the Bank of China building. But hold up, what exactly does China want here? Well, it depends who you ask. For starters, it wants influence. And you can't blame it for this. The US wants influence, and they spend billions of dollars through trade, donations, nations, diplomacy, military, whatever it takes. Trade between China and Latin America has grown from $18 billion in 2002 to more than $300 billion today. And China is ultimately here to present itself as an alternative partner to the United States. Its president has visited the region nearly a dozen times since taking office. But there's another thing that China wants here too, to isolate Taiwan. See, China claims Taiwan as its own, but Taiwan disagrees. And China wants countries around the world to pretty much end relations with Taiwan. Those willing to do so will be rewarded. That library being built in El Salvador was a direct result of the country cutting ties with Taiwan. In 2018, El Salvador recognized Beijing and abandoned Taiwan. China began to reward the country with this library and a stadium. He's a politician of a developing world country, so he needs money to come in. So, and he's doing what his agenda tells him to do. But El Salvador's president got criticized, saying that this is a debt trap, referring to the loans that China gives in Africa, which many argue is a way for China to control the continent by offering lucrative loans, knowing that countries will have a hard time paying them back. But El Salvador's president fired back with this tweet. What part of non-refundable did they not understand? It's not a loan, but a donation. Another country to cut ties with Taiwan is Panama. The move happened five years ago, and Taiwan responded by saying it felt anger and regret. China has had a long relationship with Panama, dating back hundreds of years. And today, Chinese people represent 5% of its population. The Panama Canal is used mostly by the US and China, which means both countries have a vested interest in it. In 2018, China stopped its plans to actually build an embassy at the mouth of the Panama Canal. Tension between the US and China sometimes happens here in Panama. And at one point, China was planning to open an embassy at the base of the canal. But those plans were scrapped after the U.S. pressured Panama's president. One diplomat sang, of course there was pushback from the U.S. They weren't going to allow a huge Chinese flag next to the entrance of the canal. Yet, Chinese presence is everywhere around Panama. I'm at a mall in Panama City, and above me you have a celebration for Chinese New Year. And over here, they have a promotion centered around Beijing 2020, of course, the Olympics in China. China. Next, head over to Brazil, where China has invested billions of dollars. In 2018, China announced it would spend $38 billion in Brazil's electric grid. Chinese companies are now moving more staff here. In the past few years, that population increased. More of these companies are getting, needing more people to move uh, to Brazil. And China's desires for Brazil aren't just at a federal level, but even its mayors and local government officials go to China to discuss trade and investments in Brazil. But a lot of China's actions are bringing skeptics. They are making amazing deals, helping these poor, undeveloped countries, but actually they are trying to take advantage of them. So like a new subway, no worry, Chinese government is there for you. We're gonna help you. How much I owe you? No, no, this is nothing. Just sign this paper. I will be there in 50 years. The past five years have marked a massive shift in Latin America as China's biggest tech companies enter the market. Here in El Salvador, they're promoting Chinese smartphones for as cheap as $35 for a phone. In a place like 
like this, you won't see any Samsung or Apple iPhones. You will see a lot of Chinese smartphones because the average monthly income in El Salvador is around $350. So of course, if you're making that much money, of course you cannot afford an Apple phone. This is my phone, uh, Xiaomi, less than $300. So why no iPhone or Samsung? Because it's a lot of money to spend on a phone. Xiaomi and Huawei, they're two massive phone companies that only expanded outside of China in recent years, but quickly became the top selling smartphone makers. You won't find them in the US after virtually being banned, with the US citing security concerns, claiming they have ties to the Chinese government, which there has been much debate. You want to do business in China with a Chinese company, you have to transfer your technology to them. Numerous other telecom companies from continuing to grow and spy at our expense. There's been no proof that anything that Huawei is doing or any of their equipment is leaking anything. To the contrary. But outside the US, people don't seem to care or question any of that. Xiaomi has become one of the top smartphone makers here in Brazil. If you don't know what Xiaomi is, you're probably American because you will not find Xiaomi stores in the US, but it's massively expanded across the world in Brazil. And yes, it totally reminds me of an Apple store. This brand is growing really fast. Actually, the guy at the store tells me they're planning to open 10 Xiaomi stores here in Brazil just this year. I've come to this popular mall in Uruguay where they have opened a Xiaomi store. It's the third one here in Uruguay. In all of South America, there are only two Apple stores, but here in small country of Uruguay, they've already opened three Xiaomi stores in recent years and it's increasing, but it sells things you would never find at an Apple store, like a screwdriver. This is really interesting that it sells iPhone chargers. It's my first time to take Didi. You can think of Didi as the Uber of China, but it's not just China anymore because I see it heavily being used in Argentina, Brazil. All right, so a 20 minute ride costs about $1.50, which is obviously very, very cheap. Uber is also cheap here, but not that cheap. One thing he said in the Didi ride, he actually prefers Didi to Uber because the commission that he makes is a little bit higher than Uber. And he said that it's actually cheaper for the consumer as well. He said Didi has been around a couple years now here in Argentina. And when I, I asked, I was like, oh, it's Chinese, right? And he said he thinks so, but he didn't seem to really know that much or care. Didi Chusing, it's the first thing I saw when I left my hotel in Panama City. Here in Brazil, a go-to app has become 99 and it's a ride-sharing app. You order a ride the same way you would as Uber. So this is a direct competitor, Uber versus 99 and they also have a food component that are competing with Uber Eats. So people have the choice, should I use Uber Eats or should I use 99 food? There's also another capability here called 99 pay. So at the bottom of the tab, you can either get a ride or you can actually pay someone. You can do it all within the 99 ecosystem, which the US, not so common. You don't see that so often. And it's super interesting because a lot of China tech companies do that. You have Alipay, Tencent also has WeChat pay. Um, so that's something China sees as the future of payments. More than 1 billion people use WeChat. It's a messaging platform that also has an easy to use payment feature. Of course, most of that is in China, but now China wants to take over some of the US dollar's dominance through its new digital currency. They are about to launch a digital currency, the digital renminbi. That is gonna be the new dollar in uh, 10 years, in 15 years. All the world is making billions with China. Think of it like a digital version of its paper money. And unlike Bitcoin, this is backed by a central bank. So just like you'd take a $10 bill out of your pocket, here you would do it on your phone, but it's Chinese money. They were tied to the American economy thanks to the dollar, but the dollar is weak and it's been weak for so long now. And it's not only inflating, it's not the main currency anymore. But 88% of global transactions are still done in US dollars. So it's not going anywhere anytime soon, but things could shift particularly in a place like Argentina. With its 50% annual inflation, the first thing most people do here after they get paid is exchange their Argentinian pesos into US dollar. Then they stash it under their mattress. That's their entire savings, is physical US dollars in their home. But if a stable digital currency allows them to hold assets on their phones, 
Why wouldn't they? I mean, China owns a huge part of the American debt, so China owns the United States. With the digital renminbi, not only are you using China's currency, but its central bank can see your payment activity. It knows your identity, who you're paying, and who paid you. What happens when your show is llegado el momento de tratar dirigeant ukrainien et britannique? This is CGTN. It's China's state-funded media network, and it's meant to be seen by people outside of China. I mean, you'll find it on TV in your hotel room in Mexico, Paris, Turkey. Oh, and on Facebook, they have 118 million followers. That the United States pays attention to most of Latin America only when there is a particular crisis of concern to the United States, whether it be the war on drugs, then. Communism. This media conglomerate hosts specials about Latin America's shifting love toward China, where they bring on American professors and political analysts to say things like this. Let's look at what's happening internally in the United States. Deterioration uh, of the political system, dysfunctionality of government. So how is the U.S. responding to all this? We believe very much peaceful rising China. George Bush and Barack Obama viewed their ties as pretty much positive for everyone. Trump was more suspicious as part of his nationalistic approach. China, 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 China. But today, U.S. Senators Bob Mendez and Marco Rubio introduced legislation to counter China and Russia's influence in the region. The U.S. and G7 leaders launched an initiative called Build Back Better World, which is a counter to China's Belt and Road Initiative. Last year in Ecuador, the U.S signed an agreement for $2.8 billion in infrastructure projects. This money could also be used to refinance China's so-called predatory debt. And as part of it, the U.S. said they would want them to ban China technology. But is all of this too late? The CIA, the Fed, they had the leash. Now that leash is loose and there is another bull in town. Do you so, think the U.S. will step up its, its game? I mean, when... Uh, uh, to be honest with you, I think they cannot. I mean, it's too late. They don't have enough power. They don't have enough money. So what happens next? Many people I meet here are indifferent to China's rise in influence, while others are more critical. We don't have that same impression, at least not in such a strong way that Americans probably have. We know that, yeah, car companies, phone companies, they're starting to have a bigger role here. But it's something that goes kind of naturally, and, and people don't question the themselves about it. It's, it's not something that comes ever so often. We will have to explain to our children and most certainly to our grandchildren while China dominates everything that matters. The, the Latin American people, they said, no, there is something wrong with the Chinese government or the Chinese influence in South America. They don't even realize that uh, the best way to develop a country is by yourself, not depending on another big country, a different country with different culture. Historians will condemn as the beginning of the end of America's place in the world as its most influential nation.